I've been doing a teaching here on fear. And I'm going to include in this teaching the resurrection, fear. And because of what Jesus Christ did, we shouldn't have all this fear dominating our lives. We saw in Numbers chapter 14, verse 9, that the reason why the children of Israel never got their inheritance was because of fear. Amen. And this fear came in in the book of Genesis chapter 3. And fear controls a lot of us, a lot of us. Even the disciples after Jesus was crucified. Go to John chapter 20, verse 19. Fear came upon them. When Jesus was crucified before he was resurrected. In John chapter 20, verse 19, he said, Then the same day in the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They were afraid of men. Fear. And most people have a spirit of fear upon them. But we all are going to go through some stuff, but the word of God tells us, fear not. Amen. Amen. Fear not. Amen. That's why Jesus said in John 16, 33, you know, fear not. He says, in this world, John 16, 33, he says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. He said, you're going to encounter some stuff, but rest in me. I, will, I took care of everything. Amen. Took everything. Amen. Then Peter came along in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Amen. And he gave us some more warning about fear. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Just because you're going through some stuff, don't let fear come in, come in and dominate you. Amen. Be concerned, but don't be fearful. Are you following me? Don't be fearful. And most Christians, uh, they say, well, I'm not afraid, but you're very timid. You're very timid. You don't speak like you got the victory. Why oh, you listen to me? You don't pray like you got the victory. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul is talking to Timothy. He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a love, but a, but a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. He is, this word fear in the Greek it's the Greek word which means timid. Dilelia, I think it is. Amen. Fear. Greek word is the ilia. Greek is timidity. Timid. Fearful. You know, you, 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 you're not frightened. Amen. You're not terrified, but you, you, just, you just don't step out like you should. Amen. It's because of you're timid. Praise God, you're timid. And... Uh, we can go in the Old Testament and we can see those who didn't have the Holy Spirit and didn't have the whole word of God. Some of them operated in boldness. Amen. And that's how we should operate. Because we are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of Jesus. And Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1 it says that Proverbs chapter 28 Verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursues them. That's fearful. But the righteous are bold as the lion. You know how bold the lion is? He's not the biggest animal in the jungle, but he think he is. He's not the fastest in the jungle, but he think he is. Are you following me? Praise God. He's not the strongest but he think he is. And when he walks in that jungle, he is the boldest thing there is. Everybody, when they see him, they sh all the animals, they shake because of the lion. All you got to do, we, me and my wife, we, we were over in, we were over in uh, Kenya, I believe. And we went out to teach and preach to the Maasai. How many ever heard of the Maasai tribe? You probably see them on TV. They, they jump, they jump. Those are the Messiah. They're out in the bush. So me and my wife went out there to, to, to minister to the Messiah tribe. 
And we stayed at a hotel that was, they call it, in the park. No, no fence, no nothing. It was in the park. It's where wild animals roar. At night, all of a sudden at night, a lion uh, roared. My wife, you hear, you hear that? <laughs> is that true, mother? She heard, heard the lion roar. So my point is, whenever a lion roar, everybody get afraid. <laughs> Even though he's not the baddest in the world, but when he speaks, you see, when he roars, he's speaking. I'm the baddest dude in the block. I'm the baddest dude in town. Amen. And that's what we should be. We should be as bold as a lion. Amen. And the best example that we can get, we got many examples, but we've been using one. And that is David. Now, they go to first, we can go to first Samuel chapter 17, verse 32, 40, 45, and 48. Look at verse Samuel 17. Let me tell you what's going on here. Before, hold up, take it off right here. Then we'll put that back up. What's happening here is Goliath, everybody heard so about David and Goliath. Goliath is coming to battle the children of Israel. And this giant, Goliath, is nine feet tall. As I'm standing here, I'm, you add me from the floor, I could be about nine feet, or maybe even taller than nine feet. And David was like this, <laughs> to the giant, to all the other Israelites. And the Israelite was on one side of the valley of Eli, and, and the Philistine was on the other side. They said, well, whoever can beat Goliath, we'll serve you. But if you can't beat him, you got to serve us. So all of Israel, men, they were afraid. And so David's father went to David. He was out watching his sheep. He said, take this food to your brother. They're fighting a battle. So David goes down with the food, and he gets there. He sees all these folks shaking. All these bad dudes shaking, everybody slopping and shaking. He says, what's going on, boys? What y'all, why y'all so afraid? He says, did you see this giant? Go to, look at 17. Now look at 17, verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. He said, I certainly will go and fight with this. Y'all chill. Don't be afraid. He said, I'm going to take you this guy. And he said, oh, what are y'all be shaking for? And look at verse 40. And, he, and David Started going after at Saul. Before he went, at Goliath, he said he went to the brook and he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in his scrip, and his sling in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Amen. Look at verse 45. Remind David, the ruddy guy, he's going to fort, look at 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. He said, you come in with me, with all that stuff, all the armor, I'm coming to you in the name of my God. He curses Jehovah. And look at verse 48. This is the part that gets me. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and draw nigh to, to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards that army to meet the Philistine. <laughs> Everybody else was afraid. But David, get, he goes out and gets him five smooth stones out of the brook and got a slang shot, and he ran towards this nine-foot-tall giant. No fear. No fear. We all fight giants every now and then. Amen. All of us fight giants. Every now and then we will fight a giant. Not one giant. You may fight one today, but you got another one coming tomorrow. Amen. Sometimes we have some sometimes we have some little runs. We had to knock them out, but sometimes a giant pops up. Amen. And only the faith in Jesus can we knock this guy out. And when we look at this story, I looked at it for years, for years. 
And he said he took five smooth stones out of the brook. And I'm always studying and studying and studying, so I looked up what the word brook means. The brook represents gospel. The stone represents a part of the gospel. So what David did, we can take it, bring it up to our date. He went to the gospel and got five smooth stones, or five things. that He's going to whoop this giant. Five smooth. So I've been teaching on five smooth stones. Amen. Five smooth stones. And last week we spoke about the first stone. And the first stone was David told Glass, I come unto you in the name of the God of hosts. So David, the first stone and the only stone David threw was the name. The name. And I share with you, us, we being Christians, we got five, we got more than five smooth stones. But I'm only going to teach you on five. And the first stone we have is the name. Amen. Is the name. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12 and 14, the name. Look what he said, John chapter 12, 14, verse 12 and 14. And this is Jesus talking. Keep in mind that Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. The word of God says this is God. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Amen. So John chapter 14, verse 12. I don't know what's going on back there with our computer today. So, but I'll read it. Oh, there we go. And Jesus said, the night before he was crucified, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Look at verse 13, 14. He said, And whatsoever ye shall act in what? My name, Jesus, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son, 14. And if you should ask anything in my name, I would do it. So the first stone we have is the name of Jesus. Don't be timid when you have, when you speak in that name. Amen. Don't be timid. Amen. Be bold when you speak in the name. Don't just let it, well, oh, praise Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hurt my leg. No, 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 don't do that. That name, when you speak that name, speak it with authority. Amen. Amen. Speak it right now with authority. Whatever you do, when, you, when that name comes out of your mouth, that's the name of God. He's given us the power of eternity. God has given you the power of eternity to use his name. Amen. So when I speak that name, I'm, I'm coming in the name of Jehovah God. And his name is Jesus. Are you following me? Just like if we was the president of the United States, if I was an ambassador, if I go somewhere, I would go to the name of Biden. Are you following me? And everybody would respect me because I come in his name. Are you following me? And that's how we should be with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when we speak that name, we got to have boldness when we speak that name. Boldness. Boldness. Don't be afraid. Don't be, whoever you come around, don't be afraid to say, well, Jesus. I forgot who it was. He was going to they had called him to, pre, to open up a sermon or teach at the White House. They said, but you can't use the name Jesus. He, well, you got the wrong guy. Amen. Yeah, they want him to come and I think with with, with inauguration, one of the inauguration. They wanted to, pre, to speak at the inauguration. But they, they didn't want him to use the name Jesus. You see, and he said, no, you don't use the name Jesus. You got the wrong guy. You can say God. Even when I hear people praying, they say, oh God this, oh God that, oh God. I said, what do you mean, oh God? There's many gods in the world. What God is he talking about? Right. Oh God this and God that, God this and God that. What God are you talking about? Jesus is God. And he has a name that's above every name. Doctor said, Mr. Kennedy, you have, Mr. Kennedy, you see this here? You have cancer in your colon. You may have to operate. I looked at it. The x-ray, I said, you do what you got to do, I do what I got to do. I said, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, I'm healed. Amen. I never said nothing but thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When they did what they had to do, they came back and said, we can't find nothing. Or let them say, like my daddy would say, we can't find nothing. Amen. You don't need no chemotherapy, you don't need no radiation, you're good to go. Now, I don't even listen to folks say, well, it's coming back, it's in remission. I ain't, I, uh, Jesus said, I'm healed. I even said, well, you can't eat no sweets, but I'm tearing up Snicker bars up. I got a whole, I went to BJ's, and I'm hiding from somebody. 
Because somebody come in my study and they steal my stuff. I ain't going to call no names. Amen. But what I'm saying is that it's the name that I was healed. In the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 6, we see Peter now after the resurrection day, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. He went to the temple to pray and he saw the guy begging. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. What do we have? The name. He said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hold it back there. Peter, Peter said, I ain't got no money, but what I got is a name. In Jesus' name, rise and walk. Mother Hornsby just, just walked in. Dukes is here. I see her. Amen. David is here. So the, so the Fratigan is here. And all those who have been with me overseas have seen me. No matter what country we're in, use the name. Amen. Cast out devils in the name. Amen. Even the people here have been healed in the name. Amen. Are you following me? I never get the little boy. They brought a little boy to me. And the boy brought to me. And he couldn't walk. The mother was carried. He was about five, six years old. Put him down. He's, she's holding the hand. He's like, I said, in the name of Jesus. 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 Before you know it, the boy was running. Yes. It was the name. I said, what's the name? Duke's brought a guy to me like this. Duke, he said, I can't open my hands. When I open my hands, it's painful. I said, okay. And as I'm getting ready to call the name, Duke says, Oh, Pastor, by the way, he's a witch doctor. I said to myself, Thank you, Dukes. A witch doctor. But in the name of Jesus, them hands open up. And he got saved. He went, he was a witch doctor in the village for 50 years. He went back to that village and started preaching Jesus Christ because of that name. That name. We got, we got more than five, but we're going to talk about five. That's one name stone we had. You can throw that. See, David only threw one stone. <laughs> you can use that name. See, what I did, I, I just threw one stone. I just used the name. That's all I did. I used the name. When I pray over my kids, I use the name. When I pray over any of you, I just pray in, in, in the name. I throw that one stone. If that don't work, I got another stone. Prayer. Book of Luke says, 18, once a man should always pray. But don't be timid when you pray. Oh, Father, please, Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord. No, 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 no. Pray like you are praying, like you're going, you're going to get something. Are oh, you following what I'm saying? And don't never say please. Amen. That sounds good. But now you're praying in unbelief because you say please. If I say, can you please give me that over there? They may give it to me, they may not. But in the name of Jesus, you demand it. You speak it. Prayer. Prayer. And we pray the same thing that God prays. Amen. Boldness. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. Zephaniah, chapter 3, he's praying. <coughs> he's prophesying what's going to come in the future, like in our day. He says, for then will I turn to the people a pure heart, pure language, that they make all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. He said, there's going to come a time that all the body of Christ is going to have a pure language. They're going to speak the same thing. All right. They're going to speak the same thing. I'm going to do this little review for the y'all who are coming in here for your visit for Easter. Excuse me, Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> and for those of you watching, and for those who were here last week, just a, just a little review. It's a pure language. That, so he's saying that language that everybody's going to have. And when we get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, God gives us a prayer language. It's called speaking in tongues. And a lot of Christians, they can't stand us because we speak in tongues. They're, they're just religious. So when we get around them, not we, no, when y'all get around them, not me. <laughs> I can care less how they think. Matter of fact, I, I call them Jesus not speaking tongue. Let them get in trouble, see what they call. <laughs> Let them get in trouble. You know, see, if, see if they don't call Apostle Kenny. 
let them get in an accident and watch them call the, the man who speaks in tongues. Amen. Because when you're speaking in tongues, the Bible says when you pray, believe. You can be in a situation and you, you, you're so timid, you won't believe, so you won't get an answer. But if you, you pray in tongues, or you follow me. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. And be bold. Be bold. Don't let somebody who know a little scripture tell you. He says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit he speaketh he, the spirit. The spirit he speaketh, in the spirit he speaketh mystery. So when I speak an unknown tongue, I don't know what I'm saying. But the spirit know what I'm saying. And the spirit know exactly what to ask for. Are well, you following me? He knows exactly what to ask for. All I got to do is start speaking in tongues. Let him speak through me, through you, through you. And you got to be bold with it. You got to be bold. Got to be bold. Something happened and you don't know what to do, what to say? Just start speaking in tongues. The spirit know exactly what to say. The spirit know exactly how to speak to God's word and, and command the angels to come and do, the, do their job. Because they are here for you. Or oh, you follow what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. So last week we spoke about the name and we spoke about prayer. Amen. That's being bold when you pray. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about the word of God. You're talking about a stone. This is a boulder. <laughs> the boulder. When we speak the word of God, it's just like God himself is speaking. Understand this. Psalm 119, verse 89, what it said by God's word. Psalm 119, verse 89. We talk about it today, we're talking about the word of God. Amen. Look what it says about the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 89. It says, Let me, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. What he's saying is that whatever God said, it's, it's there. It, it will not move. God's word is in heaven. And when we pray, we, we pray, we praise the Lord, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever's in heaven, that's what I want down here. Are you following? Whatever's in heaven, I want to call it here. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever your word says in heaven, I want it here. If the word says I'm here, I want it here. Are Amen. Amen. Oh, you following what I'm saying? Because Isaiah 55, 11, you know what it says? Isaiah 55, 11, amen, it says that, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. See, whenever I'm in the image of God, and Jesus, right, because we are, we are the sons of God, whenever I speak, I got to believe. It would speak boldness, No, his word is not going to return void. Knowing that. Knowing that. Because every, his word is forever set in heaven. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being, talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus, being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Hold it right there. He says, He's upholding everything by the word of his power. He's, a, he's doing everything by the word of his power. By the word of his power. That word, word, in the Greek, is the Greek word rhema. It means a spoken word. And everything in the kingdom of God is voice activated. Are, are you following me? Everything is, whatever you speak, you activate it in your life. You can speak death, you can activate that. You can speak what God said, you can activate that in your life. When the doctor says, Mr. Kenny, you have cancer, I could have said, oh, I got cancer. I got cancer. See, I could have activated that in my colon. <laughs> he went to my wife, told my wife, he said, see here, your husband has cancer. She was standing next to my son. She looked at my son and said, don't repeat that. Don't repeat that. Don't repeat it. Everything in the kingdom of God is voice activated. You want what God said? Speak what God said. 
This word, word, rhema, spoken word, logos. It's a logos being spoken, right? You take what God says and you speak what God says. His word will not return void. That's how we get saved, by speaking what God says. Are you following me? We get saved, have eternal life by speaking what God says. We don't come on our own. Go to Romans chapter 10, verse 10. We speak what God says. Amen. And by agreeing with God, then we are saved. He said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Watch this. And with the mouth, yes. hold it right here, confession is made unto salvation. Now, yes. this is very important. Yes. With the heart man believeth, but with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is healing. It's health. It prospers. You know, so with our mouth, we can speak things. If we can get healing. We can prosper. Amen. With the mouth. Are oh, you following me? That's why Proverbs said, Jesus said, with thy words, by thy words thou art sneered. But what's saying here, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That word confession is very important. Ain't going to be long. That word confession is very important. In the Greek, that word confession, mean, you know what it means? Homologio. It means to say the same thing. So what we're saying now, the word of God, we got to speak exactly what God says. Uh -huh. Speak what God says. Homologio. Don't speak what I want. <laughs> Am I in this place by myself? Y'all too sharp. Y'all ain't saying nothing today. Or y'all or, or thinking about going to, going, going to Longhorn. <laughs> speak what God says. Don't speak how you feel. Don't even speak what the situation is. Don't speak the surroundings. Don't say what everybody says. Just speak the word. That's, just learn the word. Speak the word. That's why he don't want you to come into Bible study. Because he don't want you to learn the word. That's why he don't want you in a church like this that's going to teach you the word. See, when you come in here, I don't, get a, I don't start slobbing. <laughs> bless, bless you, Lord. Come, Jesus. <laughs> yes. See, you ain't getting nothing but some slob. Are oh, you following what I'm saying? That's why, that's why, that's why it's called Christian growth. Amen. Christ, this is Christian growth. You come in, you get the word of God, then you can grow. Then you can be bold. You can be bold. You can be bold acting all the kingdom things and you can get it activated in your life. But you only got to say what God says. The kingdom of God is voice activated. It's voice activated. You can say what the devil said, it's going to come. Or you can say what God said, you're going to get it. Just speak it and be bold. Your husband this, your, father, your wife this, and your kids that Don't pay no attention to that guy. But my son is healed. My kids, my son, all of my kids, they're saved. They're saved. All that dope they smoke, they're saved. I don't care how much dope they're smoking. Y'all look at me like, let me, let me go here. I don't know how much dope, Kim, how dope y'all smoking. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I don't care how much cocaine y'all snorting. Y'all y'all snorting. Are oh, you following? I'm praying. My kids are saved. My kids are saved. They are saved. I said they're saved. I'm saying what God says. He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thy house shall be, whole house shall be saved. I believe in Jesus Christ. Now my house is going to be saved. And I agree with I, I believe it and I agree. He may not save it right now. But they're going to get saved. They may be on their deathbed. But they're going to get saved. Are oh, you following me? They may be backing up for 40 years. Snorting cocaine, smoking dope, drinking gin, chasing coke 45, doing everything. Chasing women, chasing men. Cha Some of y'all don't know what that means, but that's okay. You're going to get saved. Are oh, you following what I'm saying? Say what God says. Always say what God says. When the devil comes, don't listen to him. Just speak the word. Jesus came as our example. 
I'm going to give you two case studies. Okay, then we'll let you go. We're talking about the word today. This is a stone you can throw. And let me tell you. David only threw one and killed that giant. You can, throw the, you can throw the name. You can pray. Or you can use the word. It's up to you what, what, what stone you're going to throw. You can throw them all. Or you follow what I'm saying? You can throw them all. Well, just understand one thing. When you do it, do it with boldness. Do it. Speak what God says. Speak what Jesus said. Jesus is God. First, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. What is what this? Put it up right quick for our visitors. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. For without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, and received up to the glory. Who, who is that? Nobody else but Jesus. Go to first, go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians 1, 16. Colossians 1, 16. For by him were all things created. Look at this. Talking about Jesus. I'm going to say what, what the word of God says. He said, by who? By Jesus were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether it be throne or, or, throne or dominion or principality or powers, all things was created by him and for him. So Jesus has to be the Lord. Whoever the Lord is, that's who God is. Amen. Amen. Whoever the Lord is, that's who God is. Amen. Jesus said, you call me master and Lord, you say well. If he ain't Lord, he lied to us. He said, you call me Lord, and I am Lord. Oh, my God. I'm only going to follow him. When he speaks, everybody listens. Everything listens. You're going to be tempted. Devil, devil's coming. Just speak the word of God. That's it. Amen. Throw that stone. Amen. I don't care how much armor he got on. Just throw it. Amen. I believe David, when he was some coming name of the Lord of hosts, I don't think he was that accurate. Amen. I don't think he was that good. Because the first time he, we ever read that he threw a stone, I think he took it. The, slung, that, the Holy Ghost took it. That stone came like this. Yeah. Boom. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you following me? I don't think, I don't think, because his shield is so small. Are you following me? Just, do, just throw the stone. And throw the word of God. Throw the logos. When you throw the raw logo, it becomes rhema. He's upholding all things by the rhema of his word. The spoken word. He's upholding all things by the power of his word. By the spoken word, speak what God said. That's your authority as a child of God. Amen. Give you a couple of case studies. Go to Matthew chapter 8. See, when you speak what God says, the angels stand around. Hold on. Because before, before you go to Matthew 8, watch this. When you speak what God says, the angels are going to move. And they're coming. They're coming with a sword. That's why the word of God is what? It's a sword of the spirit. You, all you do is speak it. You, ain't gonna th you don't have a sword. All you do is speak it. But it's, but, but it's a sword. Somebody else got a sword. Go to Joshua chapter 3, chapter 5, verse 13. You don't see, but somebody else got a sword. Joshua 5, 13, I believe. Look at Joshua 5.13. He's going to go to the promised land. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with a, his sword drawn. With his, in his hand, Joshua, Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I guess that answer said, You don't want to see me, right? <laughs> That they can't see me. You don't want to see me, right? Yes. What I'm saying? This one angel, yes. this one angel with a sword, yes. 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 
All Joshua got to do is do what God told him to do, say what God said, and this, he goes to swing that sword. And when we speak the sword, we speak the word of God, the angel is going to adhere to the word of God, and that sword is going to start swinging. It's like cutting off some demons' necks, heads. The word of God is the sword of spirit. That word, word of God, is the rhema. You can say, the rhema of God is a sword. The spoken word, say, speak. Speak. But only speak what God says. Read your Bible, study your Bible. Angels have swords, flaming swords. One angel killed 185,000 men. One angel. One angel. You worry about him, her, your kids, whatever. You need one angel. So I speak that over my kids. They, have, they, they go out, they party, everything, they have accidents, the car, nothing happens. Amen. Angels are right there working. Amen. Oh, you follow me? Amen. Angels are working. I, I told this testimony many times. My daughter is going back to school. She came home for a vacation, for, for, for a week or whatever. She's going back to West Georgia on I-20, round about on I-20 downtown near the college center. And for something happened, I, I know a tire blew up and the car spin around on I-20. And it was facing the oncoming traffic. Trucks. You know how fast to go on I-20. <laughs> She's facing traffic. Guess what? All the traffic stopped. And the people got out of their car and went over and pushed Tiffany to the side. You know why? Daddy praying. I said, Daddy's praying. Daddy's praying. I said, Daddy's praying. But I always pray what God says. God answers my prayer. I only pray what he says. Because the angels are standing around. Go to 2K study. 1. Matthew chapter 8, verse, verse 5. This is about a centurion. Watch Jesus. Watch this. You got to know who he is. Matthew 8, verse 5. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him. 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Seven. And Jesus said unto him, watch this, I will come and heal him. Watch the centurion. Then the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be here. He's, all you got to do is speak the word. Amen. You don't have to come, Lord. Just speak the word, and my servant will be healed. He knew who Jesus was. He knew. He was Lord. Because the Lord, he owns everything. You're renting, you're renting somewhere? You have a landlord. He owns your house, your apartment. He owns the territory. Just speak the word. That's all you got to do, Jesus. And he'll be healed. And Jesus spoke the word. He left. Guess what? Before he got home, he came back and said, your son is healed. He serves heal. Are you following me? But Jesus gave a very good example when he first came. We gonna this is my last case study. Go to Matthew chapter four. Speaking the word, only speak what God says. Don't speak no fools. Don't be wishing and hoping and jibbing and jabbing. Just speak what God says. Matthew four. Here's Jesus when he first started the ministry. Amen. He done, he done fasted forty days, forty nights. Amen. He, he haven't eaten anything. He just fasting and praying. He gave me to start his ministry. Praise God. So here he's, he, he's in the wilderness. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Watch this. Hold it right there. But he answered. But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of, out, out of the mouth of God. What did he do here? What did he do? 
The devil came, he didn't say, devil, now you know I'm Jesus. You know I'm hungry. You know, get to leave me alone, please, devil. No, no, he, you know, he didn't do that. How did he answer that devil? How did he answer that devil? Huh? How did he answer that devil? The same way you're going to answer, the same way I'm going to answer. He said, it is written. It is written. What do you mean it is written? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It is written. And he, and he humbled him, and he, and he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger. And thou knowest not, he, he, watch this, neither did they fathers know that he might make thee know that man, well, here we go, here was it, that man who do what? Doeth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. See, that's the word of God. And, that, and that's how he fought him. There was no New Testament, but he went back and got, he went back and got the Old Testament. He got that, told the devil that, the devil, okay. He, are you following me? Are you listening to me? He didn't argue with it, he just went back into the Deuteronomy 8.3 and quoted, man, it's not a little bit of a bread he got out of town. He'll leave you too. But guess what? He's definitely coming back. Go back to Matthew chapter, chapter 5, chapter 4, verse 5. Then the devil taketh him, <laughs> the devil's busy. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple, verse 6. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. Now, see, hold it right there. See, you talk, call scripture, he's going to quote some too. Oh, you see this? He going he know the word. He's gonna quote something. He don't obey it, but he knows he gonna quote something to get you to do what he wants you to do. You see, for it is written, he shall. What he was, he was quote? He's quoting Psalm ninety-one, verse eleven and twelve. He's quoting Psalm ninety-one, verse eleven and twelve. But Jesus ain't listening to him. See, he, the devil can take things out of context to tempt you, to get you to get out of the will of God. 91, he's giving a charge over there, keep them all the way. Go, go back to, to verse 7. No, back, back to 4 7. Matthew 4 7. Matthew, Jesus said to him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What is he saying? Huh? What, here again. Let's do four and five, five and six again, and then we'll go to the answer. Five is Matthew 4, 5 and 6. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple. Six. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in, thee, and in thy hand shall thou bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot, lest thou, least thou, at any time thou dash that foot against the stone. Amen. What is he doing here? What are, what, are we, what are we learning here? We're learning how to use the word of God. Jesus is our example. The centurion knew, now Jesus giving us an example how to do it. So Jesus, he answered by, he, how do you answer? Look at verse 7. Verse, uh, yeah, verse 7. Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What is he doing now? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16. Deuteronomy 6, 16. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Messiah. See that? He's, he's using words. He's using God's word. Are you following me? He's using God's word. Every time the devil comes to him, he quote Deuteronomy. He couldn't quote anything, but he just, see, what he's speaking? He's speaking what the word, he's speaking what this says. And this is our stone. Are you following me? Go, to, go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. Look at verse 8. Again, here, see, he's busy. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship, hold on, worship me. See, he know that he got all authority from the devil, from, from Adam. He, he, he took everything from Adam. 
He said, I'll give it to you. Amen. But look what he says. Jesus said, look at Deuteronomy 6.13. Deuteronomy 6.13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Only him. You see that? The devil is always going to come, but every time he comes with you, you answer with what? The word of God. Take that sword of your spirit and, and sling it at him, chop his nail. Get him so he don't come much. I said much because he's going to come again and again and again. All you do is speak the word of God. Don't speak the situation. Especially over your kids. You ain't never going to be nothing. Oh no, be quiet. <laughs> don't say you just, you just, all right, you just this, you just that, just like your ugly dad, your bad, no, 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 just like your ugly mama. <laughs> you always do what you y'all do, you all do, I'm watching this, so, so, you just, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, just chill, just speak what God said. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by what God says. We hear what God says, we believe what he says, amen. We speak what he says, we act on what he says, we wait for what God, what God said to come to pass, no, no matter how long it takes. Happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless you.